Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a good week, staying strong, staying healthy, being productive. In this class, everyone, we are looking at IELTS, the listening section. Specifically, we will look at part one and part two, the first two parts, and we're going to discuss on how to get those accurate band nine answers. Welcome, Angelo Cristiano, Fadhil, nice to see our members. Welcome, Carolina, our moderator, and welcome, students, Gishna, Imad. Namaraj, Arda, nice to see so many of you here with me today. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Definitely visit us there. Join the thousands of students who participate in our lessons. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have six original practice exams for you. Uh, we have uh, lots of videos, a fully interactive course. We have help for the writing and for the speaking. This is our Academic IELTS website here. You can click that big red button to join our premium package. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are an official British Council IELTS Registration Center and certified agents. So you're in good hands with us. Uh, this is our general IELTS website here at gieltshelp.com. Again, click that big red button to join us there. Okay, everyone. So um, if you have questions, send an email to me, adrian at aehelp.com. Hi, Ramnik. Hi, Abin. Good to have you you in the class today. Uh, if you want to follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help and GIELTS help. This is our academic. This is our general. If you want to get our apps, search for academic IELTS help and general IELTS help. Those are our apps. They are uh, also connected to the websites. Okay, so let's do some listening. Uh, we are looking at exam number six here from our second book. So this is test six for those of you that have access to our uh, premium uh, courses. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the audio uh, for part one of the listening. I'm going to use my microphone, headset microphone that I have here and a nice uh, Bose speaker. So uh, make sure uh, to listen carefully, answer the questions. Do not put your answers into the chat, okay? Let everybody answer on their own first. So record your answers separately from the chat on another piece of paper or a document, and then we will go through them, okay? If you give a wrong answer in the chat, it just becomes really confusing for everyone. So don't do that, okay? Um, all right, uh, so I'm gonna play the audio, listen carefully. And firstly, I have to get into our website here for the audio, so just give me a moment. Uh, so here I am in my, my student account because of course I've logged in. And then here, I'll make sure my volume is up. Uh, if it's quiet for you, then turn up the volume, but I will have quite a bit of volume on it and I figured out how to do that. So um, just give me a second here. Okay, volume is max here. Uh, let me just check my volume on my output device here real quick as well. So, yeah, we're max there as well. Okay, good. All right, everyone. So I'm gonna get going here pretty quick. Get ready. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to uh, show you a neat little trick at the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, scroll to the different parts of the uh, listening section so you can get an idea of the topic of part two, three, and four. So pay attention for that. Pay attention to the topics of part two, three, and four. Okay, I'm just scrolling to our CD number six because it's exam six and track one. Here we go. 
recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between a man and a woman concerning the requirements of running for municipal office. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good morning. You've reached the Information Office for Municipal Affairs. This is Florence speaking. Good morning, Florence. My name is Walter, and I'd like some information on running for municipal office in the upcoming election. You're in the right place. The first piece of information I'll need from you is the specific office you'd like to run for. Town councillor, I'd imagine. The man says he would like to run for town councillor. So this has been indicated for you. Now we begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good morning. You've reached the Information Office for Municipal Affairs. This is Florence speaking. Good morning, Florence. My name is Walter, and I'd like some information on running for municipal office in the upcoming election. You're in the right place. The first piece of information I'll need from you is the specific office you'd like to run for. Town councillor, I'd imagine. Great. I need some information from you in order to get you on the ballot this September. Are you ready to get started? Yes, I'm ready. This should only take a few minutes. Okay, then, let's start with your surname, Walter. Colchester. C O L C H E S T E R. And Walter is spelt in the regular fashion? Yes, W A L T E R. Okay, next I need your date of birth. I was born the 11th of December 1979. The 11th of December 1979 makes you 36 years old at the time of the September elections. Is this correct? Yes, that's correct. Great. I'll need your national insurance number. My national insurance number is WC2856983. WC2856983. That's right. Great. And the last pieces of information I need from you are your current address and phone number. I live at 23 Shaftbury Lane, Plymouth. And you can reach me on 01752-667-835. Wonderful. Next, I'll give you some information on running for municipal office. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. First of all, you should know that you're one of 15 candidates so far that have registered for the four town councillor positions. Since the deadline for registration is in a week, 
I do not anticipate this number increasing by more than a candidate or two. Second, please know that there are three all-candidate debates, of which you must attend two in order to qualify for office. I have to participate in debates? Yes, that's right. They are on the 14th and 28th of August, and the final one is held on the 4th of September. They'll be held at the local community hall on Ashford Street. Each one begins at six o'clock in the evening. That sounds fine. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, there is. Do you plan on spending money on your campaign? This could be on adverts in newspapers, promotional signage or other advertising. Well, I was planning on taking an ad out in the local paper, yes. Not a problem, but please keep in mind that there is a strict £2,000 limit on campaign spending for town councillors. All expenses must be reported to this office. Overspending will result in disqualification. I don't think that should be a problem. Oh, and one more thing, Mr Colchester. There is a £50 registration fee for each candidate for town councillor. You may pay this fee over the phone by credit card, with a cheque in the post, or in person with cash, credit or debit. How would you like to pay? I live right by the office, so I'll drop by this afternoon to pay in person. My assistant will take care of that for you. I think that is all I need from my end. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. Thanks for your help. You're welcome and good luck. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, so uh, make sure to <clears throat> check those answers in that half minute. Make sure you didn't make any mistakes. I'm just going to stop our audio here and then we'll go through the answers together. Uh, so again, as I mentioned at the start, a really good strategy to implore when you're doing the listening section, and you can easily do this, especially on the computer-based IELTS exam, is to look at parts two, three, and four during the instruction time so you can get an idea of the topics of those sections, especially part four, because part four is really, really quick. So I did that, I scrolled to those parts. Anybody remember what these are about? So there's part two, there's part three and part four. So anybody remember what part two is about? Um, okay, so Arda says uh, part three is about books. So something about a book. Yeah, it's something about a book and an author. Okay, Sammy says part two is something about salaries. Um, yeah, it's salaries and development at a tech company. Yeah, book and auth book and author about aesthetics. If any of you caught that, and part. Four. Anybody caught what that was about? Arda says part four was something about roads. Yeah, exactly. History of roads. Okay, so this can easily save you a band score on the exam. You can, I'm going to say potentially, get one extra band score in listening by reviewing the topics of parts two, three, and four in the introduction time. This will give you an advantage uh, for comprehension. Okay, so keep that strategy in mind. It's a good one, okay? All right, so let's go back and answer these part one questions. Part one questions are relatively easy. They're designed for band two, three, maybe four. I think band four is even higher than part one. Um, so 
you have to uh, be able to listen for demographic information like birth dates, names, addresses, social insurance numbers, credit cards, telephone numbers, and the like. Okay. All right. And Vishnav Surya One, she says, thanks for your assistance. I got 7.5 and I'll. Vishnav, congrats. Great. Send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I'd love to get your testimonial. Okay. So let's go through these answers. Um, all right. So here, this man wants to be a town councillor and he wants to run for this position in politics. Uh, his name is Walter something. What was uh, Walter's name? So what was Walter's name? They spell it, and he even spells his first name. He says W-A-L-T-E-R. And then before that, he spells his family name. Uh, Pavan says it's Colchester. Sammy agrees. You can write all capital letters, absolutely. Colchester. Okay, this C has to be big. If you write a small C, you'll get it wrong. Now, make sure that your big C and your small C are distinctly different. So uh, my small C is half the size of my big C. Uh, so make sure that you have that clear difference. Otherwise, the examiner will mark it wrong. Okay, so Colchester, you can write all capital, but remember two important points writing all capital letters. Anybody knows what that is? So if you choose to write all capitals in the reading and in, and this is the paper-based exam because in the computer-based you can hit the caps lock, but in the paper-based exam, Okay, what are they? So if you're writing all uppercase, there's two disadvantages. Uh, Sammy says it consumes time, absolutely. Okay. So it's usually for most people, it's slower uh, to write all capitals. They're bigger letters. You're, you have more movement of the hand. So they consume more time, exactly. Uh, and there's another... Uh, shortcoming. There's another disadvantage. Anybody know what that is? So there is another one. Spelling mistakes are more common. Okay, so statistically, uh, when people write all capitals, they tend to make more spelling mistakes than when they're writing lowercase letters, okay? All right, and so uh, spelling mistakes are more common. Therefore, especially for the paper-based exam, So in the paper-based exam, uh, you put your answers into the question booklet in the listening section, and then at the end, you have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. So I recommend that if you're doing the paper-based exam, write all lowercase for your answers in the question booklet, and then when you have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet, you can change them to all uppercase, but pay extra attention to the spelling, okay? Everybody clear on that, okay? All right, it's clear, yeah? All right, uh, so let's keep going with our answers. So here, I would probably just write all of it as lowercase Colchester, and then when I transfer in the 10 minutes, then I have lots of time to change it all to capital letters, okay? 
Ali, you do not have to write in capital letters, but you do have to use capitalization correctly, like in names. Okay, um, the address, you notice probably that these were not in the correct order because it's one question form. So in the IELTS, when you have a question form like this, you have to review all of this and the answers might not come in the exact order that you see, okay? They will all be in the form here. So the answer here is 23. Very good, Sammy, very good, Pavan, yeah. So it's simply 23, Shaftbury Lane. The city is Plymouth. And what's the date of birth? So when was this person born? Okay. And again, here you want to keep it simple. So number two is 23. All you need is this number because you have the name of the street. Okay. And Sammy says 11 December 1979 and keeping it easy. So 11 December 19. 79 okay so good and of course december here is just the abbreviation you do not need to put th okay just 11 december 1979 good enough it's the simplest accurate answer uh the phone number what is mr colchester's phone number how can we get a hold of mr Colchester via the telephone. And it's worth being a little bit patient in uh, part one. They often will repeat the phone number. Okay, obviously uh, Google is blocking <laughs> the phone number comments because it thinks everybody's trying to share phone numbers. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, now we see it. Thank you, Carolina, for enabling all those answers. Okay, so a lot of you have the same phone number, uh, which is 01752. Spaces, you don't have to worry about them, 667835. Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, by the way, notice how my sevens look like this, okay? I like doing that strike through so it's a clear seven. Uh, some people write sevens very quickly and they look like that. It looks like a one. Uh, be careful if the examiner doesn't know what it is, uh, they will mark it wrong, all right? Uh, so you have to have very clear numbers. Uh, sometimes my numbers can look pretty uh, weird. Uh, I've, I know that people often will say my four looks like a nine, okay? Um, so yeah, cause it's just a little difference there. So make sure that in the IELTS you pay extra attention to clarity. Again, if the examiner can't see what the number is supposed to be, then they will mark it wrong. Okay. All right. Uh, national insurance number. So what is this man's national insurance number? That's your, basically your identification number in the UK. In Canada, by the way, we call that your social insurance number. Okay, so different countries have different names for this number, but everybody's got them. Yeah, so it starts with a couple of letters, WC285. Again, you don't have to worry about spacing. Uh, for these, I definitely recommend using capital letters. So WC2856. Nine, eight, three, three, if I'm not mistaken, right? So good, okay, those were the first five answers. Colchester, 23, 11, December, 1979, 01752667835, WC2856983. All right, and then we had five more questions. Each part contains 10 questions for a total of 40 questions in the listening section. Let's take a look at the remaining five here in part one. Okay, so you had this short completing the table. It's something about the debates that are 
in connection with running for town councilor. I think the administrator says there are three debates. Here we're talking only about the second debate. Um, so what is the date of the second debate? So second debate, when does this happen? Okay, when is the second debate? Uh, Kushi, it's not just the listening answers. We're actually doing the listening practice. So we just did the listening. Uh, 28th of August. Some people have September. Uh, the correct answer here is the 28th of August. Simply 28 AUG. That's all you need. Okay. September is the third debate. 20th of August is the first debate. This is the 28th of August. Okay of the three debates. So pay really careful attention to this part here that's given. So always pay attention to the given information. Um, this one's important because we know that this information's finished after the speaker mentions Ashford Street. But before that, they mentioned the time. Um, what, um, what time is this debate? Okay, when is it taking place? Sampath says, uh, that's at 6 p.m. Yeah, I believe you're right. Uh, Sampath, it's at uh, 6 p.m. Yeah, okay. Or another way you could write it is like this. Okay, uh, if you just write six like this, that'll be wrong, okay? This is correct, this is correct, All right? So six p.m. Very good. Okay. For six and seven. Okay. And then after they say it's uh, going to be at 6 p.m. and the location is Ashford Street, uh, you know right away, okay, that is the end of that question uh, series. Let's go to the next real quick. Uh, eight and nine. Write no more than two words for each answer. What is the campaign spending limit? Okay, and it's no more than two words. Now, here we have the symbol for pound, okay? So you have the pound symbol right here. So you do not need to write the word pounds. Do not put a dollar sign, Imad. You will get it wrong. All you put here is 2,000. No dollar sign, no pound sign because it's given. If it's not given, then you would put pounds so we know what the currency is, okay? So not quid, not pounds, not dollars, just 2,000, okay? Number nine, how much is the registration fee? Again, we have the pound symbol, so IELTS is trying to help you out here, okay? All right, um, so how much is the registration fee? What does it cost? Navjot, Careful, listen for the differences in sounds. It's 5D, not 15, 5D. It's 50 pounds, 50 pounds, okay? Uh, the difference is with the 15, listen for that long T, -na. listen for those E's, okay? Uh, you won't hear that with 5D, okay? 50, 15, -na. okay? Hear the difference. Okay, 50, 15. Okay. All right. Number 10, one question, three answers. You need all three correct. Use logic. Take some notes when you hear this kind of question. What are the three ways of paying the registration fee mentioned in the recording? Direct debit? Mm, didn't really hear that. Uh, check by post. Yeah, sending a check by post. That looks good. Uh, credit card in person. Uh, yeah, that kind of looks good. Uh, cash by post. Ooh, no. IELTS would never give that as a correct answer because as I'm sure most or all of you know, you should never be putting money into an envelope. It's a bad idea. Um, so don't put cash into the place, especially in the internet age use digital transfers, don't send money or gold in an envelope, you could get into trouble. Uh, credit card over the phone, 
Yeah, that looks good. Uh, check over the phone. Uh, excuse me, what? I don't think you. Well, <laughs> these days, yeah, with the with the camera, you can take a picture of the check. So there's that option. But most countries, I think, people aren't aware of that. So uh, the correct answers here are B, C, and E. Okay, in any order, B, C, E, and that goes into the space for number ten on your answer sheet. Okay, just like that, and then you get it correct. Okay, so Ramnik, Jobair, Marjona. Yeah, good. Jobair, if you put B, C, D, then you would get it wrong. It's B, C, E. Okay. You should not post cash. Uh, no uh, government office will ask you to send them money in cash. So students, keep that in mind. If you're doing visa applications or you're doing some kind of registration for a school uh, in Canada, in Australia, they will never ask you to send money in an envelope. If somebody is doing that, it's fraud. Be really, really careful, okay? Everybody got that? So you should never be sending money in an envelope. No official school or government will ask you to send them money in an envelope, okay? All right. Okay, so um, how did you do? What did you get out of... 10. Okay. Uh, for part one, your goal should be uh, uh, eight is the minimum, but I would say nine or greater. Okay. Ramnik says, I got seven of them. It's not bad, Ramnik. You do want to get a little bit more. You want to get up to nine in part one. Okay. Because part two, three, four are going to be more difficult as we'll hear Shortly, Depika says eight. Depika, that's absolutely the minimum. Pavan nine is good. Lily nine is good. Raz ten, fantastic. Okay, all right, good. Okay, uh, let's do uh, part two, everyone. So let's listen to part two and then answer some questions. So same ideas, okay? Pay attention to similar kind of points, and let's do uh, part two. So we'll get right into it. Um, again, same thing. Listen, answer, uh, do not put answers into the, uh, chat. Just wait until the end and then we'll do them together. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go, everyone. So <clears throat> I'm going to cut back to our website here for the listening and let's just do this. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of three people discussing strategy for an upcoming meeting with investors. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Thank you both for coming in for this preparatory meeting. As you know, we have an extremely important meeting with our investors next week. While I am more than confident in the work we have done over the past year, we must be prepared to justify our progress to our investors. After all, they are the ones who pay our salaries. First, I want to review the positive outcomes we have achieved over the past year. This will make up the bulk of our presentation. Amy, would you like to give us a rundown on this front? Sure. We've achieved many positive outcomes over the past year, and furthermore, we've achieved more in the past four months than in the previous eight months. So we're certainly showing significant progress. First, and most important, sales of our app are up 50% from last year, totaling 586,000 units in the past 12 months, up from 390,000 units in the previous year. 
This is great progress. Second, we are achieving a higher purchase rate. While our sales are up 50%, the number of total downloads has remained relatively constant. This means our conversion rate has increased 50% as well. This clearly demonstrates that our efforts in this area have been fruitful. By targeting the conversion rate instead of the raw download rate, we have raised our standing and search result priority within the application stores. This will eventually lead to a higher download rate and even more sales. The upward trajectory here is very clear. We have also decreased the complaint rate from 2.5% to 1.5%. While our goal is to get this rate as close to zero as possible, this decrease represents a positive outcome and shows that our efforts to increase customer satisfaction have been successful. Yes, but if I may interrupt, I actually have to disagree on one point. I don't believe it should be a goal to get the complaint rate down to zero. While we certainly don't want a high complaint rate, the resources spent on getting the complaint rate down are better spent on increasing downloads and increasing the conversion rate. I think this is an important point to be made to the investors. While we certainly value the quality of our product, we are much more focused on maximizing the value of the investor's investment. I think such attack will go over well with the investors. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. That's a great point. We really want to emphasize that we are doing everything we can to optimize and maximize the money and resources we've been supplied with. Speaking of which, are we all agreed that we will be asking for 20% increase in operating budget? Yes. Yes. Good. And how are you going to justify such an increase? Well... Certainly by pointing to the statistical outcomes you previously referenced, but also by our need to expand. We need to increase our catalogue of apps, and to do this, we will need to hire at least two additional developers. In addition to this, I think we are now at the point in our business where hiring a market analyst would be justified. Such a person could be charged with finding niches to exploit within the market. Right now, our operations in this regard are rudimentary at best and an expert in the field could help increase our sales volume significantly. Such an expert salary might take up 5% of our operating budget, but could lead to a 10% increase in sales or more. The 5% difference would result in a net income increase of almost £100,000. I agree. Hiring a market analyst is long overdue. One more justification for a budget increase is an across-the-board pay rise, if only at the rate of inflation. 2%, say. This would go a long way to increasing worker morale and output quality. In addition to this... That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And again, check those answers. Let me just stop our audio here from our website at aehelp.com. There we go. And now we'll get back to answering the questions together. Uh, so uh, question 11, who pays the salaries of the workers in the recording? This is your short answer. Uh, write no more than two words. In this case, one word is enough. And I think it's very, very clear. So uh, who pays uh, for these workers that are having this discussion at the company? One word. Sammy says, the investors. Yeah, just investors is enough, Sammy. You don't need the article here. If you write the investors, they'll give it to you, but all you need is investors, okay? Uh, proper noun, or sorry, a right common noun. So, and it is plural. Plurals are important. The S is very important here. So investors, okay? Investors, very good. Very good, Carolina. 
leading the charge. Okay, very nice. Now, here we had this uh, filling in the uh, table. It was a little bit challenging for some of these. You had to really pay attention. Not as much repetition as part one. So current year and change from the previous year. So this is the rate of change. This is the actual uh, raw number. So sales were up 50% from the last year, totaling how much? So... Yep, gliding waves, you don't need a capital in that short answer in the previous. Um, so how much is uh, the uh, total sales here? Uh, Ramnik, 390000 was last year. So if you double that, uh, you will be pretty close. Okay. Yeah, very good, Carolina. It was 586000 586, and I'm just gonna write K instead of the three zeros. I find that it's faster than writing three zeros. So 586,000 units. Okay, very nice. Uh, VG, very nice. Yeah, Marjona, very good. Yeah, 586,000 units. By the way, uh, two of the speakers had British accents here. One of the speakers had a New Zealand accent. So careful in the listening section, you can ha hear different accents of English as well. Okay. All right. The downloads are not given. They're constant from last year. The conversion and the purchase rate is uh, not given for the current year, but they do say the change. It's up how much? So what is it up? So the conversion or the purchase rate is up by what percent? And here again, you have the percent, uh, so you don't need to write that. You just need to write the number. Koosh, frosty up, uh, Carolina, very nice, just 50, okay? When the symbol is given, you do not need to repeat the symbol, okay, or the word. So 50. Uh, the complaint rate is 1.5% in this year. Last year was 2.5%, so you had to do a little bit of math here. Uh, it's down by how much? Rumneek, very good. Rumneek says it's down by 1%. Yeah, it's down by 1%, not 2.5. Okay, so 2.5. Last year, 1.5%. This year equals down by 1%, okay? So 2.5 minus 1.5 equals one, all right? Okay. Again, 50, 15. Be careful with those differences, Paulo, okay? All right, uh, 15. Very clear, they really emphasize this. What point do the two investors agree on? You're listening for the answer in the multiple choice. They disagree on getting the complaint rate as low as possible. So the correct answer is C, okay? Uh, make sure that you uh, listen for the answer. Don't just stare at the answers. That could get really confusing, okay? All right, and what is of primary importance according to the employee? So what's, what's most important for this company? Again, use logic. It's kind of what's important for most companies um, for number 16. Is it maximizing the value of the investor's investment? Increasing the funding of the company to hire new people? Convincing the company to increase downloads and raise the conversion rates? Yeah, it's A, keep it simple. Maximizing investment, um, return on investment, maximizing that, right? So maximizing return on investment. Yeah, absolutely. So the correct answer here is A. Logic will help you with multiple choice and listening for the answer will help you on multiple choice. Staring at the choices will not help you on the multiple choice, okay? All right, this last one was a little bit of a paragraph completion. 
the employees are re requesting a 20% something in funding from the investors. What are they uh, requesting? 20% what? 20%. That's right, Ramnik. Increase. Very good, Sammy. Very good, VG. Yeah, more money, right? Increase. Give us more money. We'll make more money. That's what we've been doing. So the employees are requesting a 20% increase in funding from the investors. This will allow the company to hire two additional what? Okay. Not best friends, Pawan. What will it help them hire? Two additional. Arda says developers. Naveen says developer. Has to be plural here, students, because it's two. Two additional uh, developers. Okay. S, two, very important. Who will allow the company uh, to broaden their catalog of apps they would also like to hire uh, something. What do they want to hire uh, who would be in charge of finding new areas for development? This one was a little bit trickier. You kind of have to know uh, this position. Uh, Gliding Wave says market analyst. Carolina agrees. I agree with both of you. It is a market analyst. This is someone who analyzes the market, finds areas to target, maximizing profit. Okay, uh, finally, the team wants a pay raise pegged to the rate of, so they want a little bit more money for their hard work. Um, rate of what? They give an example, but that's not the answer, so it's not 2%, okay? They want um, not 5%, it's the rate of, Inflation, very good, Marjona. Very good, Carolina. Yeah, inflation. Rate of inflation. Inflation is the devaluation of money year by year. And I think we're going to be looking at some pretty bad inflation in the coming years due to COVID, but that's life. Um, so, inflation, increase, developers, market analysts and inflation. Count up your remarks. How did you do? What did you get from 20? Okay. Part one, part two are definitely easier than part three, part four. So you should be aiming for a pretty high mark in part two. Hopefully you're getting six, seven or more. Um, for part one and part two together, uh, you should be looking to get 16 or more correct. If you have less than 16, you have to really check on what's going on and make improvements so you can get that band score that you need for university and travel and immigration, okay? Ace Fox says, I got nine in part two. Ace Fox, that's pretty good, okay? Moaz, Abdallah, 15, that's just under. It's, it's uh, you gotta do a little bit, little bit of analysis, what went wrong. Arda, 17, not bad. Okay, Marjona, 19 is very good. Okay, all right. Ramnik says, I got eight on this one. That's good, Ramnik. All right. Uh, by the way, students, uh, if you go to our websites, either one, aehelp.com uh, or gialshelp.com, at the very bottom, you'll even find a tool uh, for your marking called the score calculator there at the bottom. And when you go to the score calculator, you can type in your score, your total score, like let's say 35 out of 40, and then it'll say, okay, that would be a band eight, okay? Uh, you can't do half uh, uh, listening, so we'll do the rest of the listening tomorrow, okay? So come back tomorrow at the same time on the 25th. Uh, we'll do listening part three and part four, and then you'll be able to use that score calculator to figure out how you actually did in this listening section. Uh, if you can't wait and you just want to study and master English in the IELTS, uh, visit us at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gialtshelp.com for general. One-time payment, lifetime access, doesn't cost much. Students who use it improve. Everybody loves it. It's that simple. 
Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. Carolina, thank you for moderating the chat. That was very useful, especially in these listening lessons where people are putting in all kinds of answers into the chat. Uh, have a fantastic rest of your day. Much love to all of you, wherever you are in the world. Keep pushing forward. The sweet fruits of your hard labor will be yours. That's a fact. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria for now, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye.